show this evening, we have, along with our regulars, uh, the marvelous Harvey Corman and Lyle Wagoner and Vicki Lawrence, we have Jack Weston and Ken Berry. Hi, come on up. How many? Four girls, four little girls. Come on up. Oh, what organization are they with? Campfire. The Campfire Girls. I should know that. The Blue, yes, of course. Aren't you cute? I shouldn't say that. Aren't you lovely? What's your name? Karen. Karen, and you are? Carol. Carol. Karen, Carol, and? Helen. Helen. Linda. And Linda. What'd you do to your nose? Was it sunburn? Or did somebody hit you? It's sunburn, yeah, you gotta watch that, you know. <laughs> well, so what is it, Karen? Uh, Miss Burnett, we'd like to make you honorary campfire leader. A leader? An honorary campfire? <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> They're going to love it. Can I keep them? <laughs> oh, they're adorable. Oh, they're going to love them. They're going to fight over them. You know what we have to do with my three girls? Because they're always losing things. And if they get three of the same thing, we've got to put their initials on the feet of the dolls, you know. But that's what we'll do. You can't get an extra one for me, huh? Okay, well, that's... Where'd you get your dimples? Where'd you get your dimples from, Karen? I don't know. How do you clean them? With Q-tips? <laughs> Thank you very much, ladies. I'm, I'm really honored. Thank you. grab a doll. <laughs> yes? Do you have any plans for doing a milk commercial? Do I have any plans for doing a milk commercial? They asked me to. They wanted me in a bathing suit and a mustache, topless. <laughs> uh, but Mark Spitz is better built, so they took <laughs> it. Yes? Um, how can you stand having two such gorgeous men around? It's Harvey Corman and Lyle Wagner. <laughs> <laughs> I can't stand it. <laughs> Vicky, did you know her record, The Night the Lights Went Out in Georgia, is now over three million? She sold over three million. Isn't that terrific? Yeah. Do you think you're a good actor? Do I think I'm a good actor? <laughs> actor than I am an actress. Yes. Are you Miss Benson? Yes, I am. You must be Mr. Parker. Right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> oh. <laughs> come, come in. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> sit down. Let's sit down. Sorry. Okay. tried this computer dating service and it really worked out wonderfully well. Yeah? Yes. They met on a Friday and they were married on a Saturday. Mm. Well, this is my first time. Mine too. It was my mother's idea. <laughs> oh. Um, 
Would you care to listen to some records? I don't like music. <laughs> you don't? No, it gives me vertigo. That's, that's funny. No, not really. It affected my father the same way. No, no, what I, I mean is it, it's, it's rather funny that the computer overlooked that. Yeah, that's right. We're supposed to have the same likes and dislikes. Well, you do like to swim. I don't know how. <laughs> how about you? Do you like skydiving? Oh, no. I wonder why the computer picked our names. Speaking of names, did you know that the commonest surname in the whole world Chinese name Chang, which is born, according to estimates, by between 9.7 and 12.1 percent of the Chinese population? No, I didn't. Oh, oh here. Here, these are for you. Oh, they're lovely. <laughs> the oldest fossil of a flowering plant was found in Colorado in 1953, dated about 65 million years old. <laughs> You're kidding. <laughs> no, I'm not. May I take your hat, Mr. Parker? Uh, call me John. <laughs> John. <laughs> the highest price ever paid for a hat was $29,471. It was worn by Emperor Napoleon on January the 1st, 1815. However, it was purchased by Moéat Chandon, a French champagne house. Gee, that's fantastic. Fantastic, Miss Benson. Call me Helen. <laughs> the longest distance for a champagne cork to fly from an untreated and unheated bottle, oh, go on. four feet from level ground, oh. is 70 feet, three tenths inches. Oh. It was popped. By A.D. Beattie, Heave of Kent, England, mm. July 20th, 1971. I'll drink to that. <laughs> Gee, your dinner smells delicious. I just love spaghetti. Oh, the largest amount of spaghetti ever consumed by a human being was 262.6 yards. It was eaten by Tom L. Skretsky in Dino's Restaurant in San Diego, May 20th, 1970. Oh, John! Oh, Helen! Oh, John. Surviving heart transplant. Oh, it's Louis B. Russell, 47 of them. Oh, go on. Oh, Helen. Oh. Helen, I'm falling for you. Oh, oh a tomcat named Fat Olive survived the fall on grass from a 160 foot high penthouse on July 18th, 1972, and only broke two legs. Oh, John. Oh, I'm getting turned on by you, John. I'm getting your message. John, the longest voyage recorded for a message in a bottle is one of 25,000 miles from the Pacific to the shore of the island of Stilt in the North Sea on December 3rd, 1968. Oh, Helen, Helen, marry me, and I promise I'll always be true. Really? In Malaya, Abdul Rahman, age 55, 67, John. But, Helen... The longest recorded marriage is one of 86 years between Temoji Bika G. Nariman and Lady Nariman from 1853 to 1940. Please, can I talk you? I'm terribly sorry, John. But I'm afraid that you and I just aren't suited for each other. I... Goodbye, John. Well, I guess I'll have to walk out of your life never to look back. And the El Wingo of Abilene, Texas, walk backwards a distance of 8,000 miles from Fort Worth, Texas, to Istanbul, Turkey. I'm sorry you didn't get to eat any dinner, John. 1,220 cold baked beans were eaten one by one with a cocktail stick in 30 minutes by Clifford Pierce at Jared's Cross, England, on December 5th, 1971. I'm sorry, too. Goodbye, Helen. Oh, Helen. Helen. John. One more kiss. Oh, John. Helen. John. The longest prolonged marathon kiss in the history of the movies was between Jane Wyman and Regis Toomey. 185 seconds in your In the Army Now. 40, John. Oh. <laughs> Helen. You feel like breaking the world's record. What kind of a record, John? The greatest number of children ever produced by a married couple was 68 by my parents. 
My mother gave birth to 16 set of twins. Get out, John. Seven. <laughs> living virgin is Sheila Levine of New York City, age 108. I think I'm going to beat her record. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, one of my very favorite people, Mr. Ken Berry.
Dr. Bennett, the x-rays prove what we were talking about. I thought so. Uh-huh. Acute appendicitis. You see, there's a slight pressure here on the kidney area, but I think we can remove it without any further complications. Blood pressure and pulse are good. Fine. Mr. Ferguson, uh, we've given you a local anesthetic, so you won't be feeling anything. I must say, though, you're a very lucky man. Too soon. How do you feel? I don't know. Everything's numb. Well, that's the way it's supposed to be. I'm nervous. No. There's nothing to be nervous about. We've performed thousands of operations like this without any complications. All right, nurse, doctors, let's proceed, shall we? Nurse Bennett, scalpel. <laughs> scalpel, please. I want a divorce. <laughs> and I want it now. This is not the time nor the place. This is the time and this is the place. I never see you anymore. You're the first one to leave in the morning and the last one to get home at night. I never get to talk to you. Well, we're going to talk right now. We're going to get this whole thing right out into the open. What is it? Is it another woman? Don't be ridiculous. We'll talk after the operation. I'll oh, give no, you that oh, no, oh, no, no. No, no. With you, it's always later. And later, when you're ready to talk, you'll be busy performing another operation. Or you might be busy in the x-ray department. Or you might be busy with some strange new disease. Oh, no. With you, it's always some silly excuse. Lorraine, I'm in the middle of an operation right now. Can't you get that through your sick head? Would you listen to him? He clams up and he calls me sick. Please, please, lady, give him the scalpel. You men, you always stick together. <laughs> you're disturbing my... I don't feel well. The pulse rate's high. Huh? Nurse Dawson, would you please get me the scalpel? Yes, sir. Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, no! You don't see that face! Oh, no! You can't have them! They're mine! Lorraine, please! No! You can't have them! They're mine! Lorraine, give us those instruments or there's going to be trouble. You want the instruments? Oh, my. That's it! <laughs> my flesh is falling. Oh, pick it up, please. <laughs> You're enjoying yourself because you're acting like a child. Oh, well, I'm so sorry. I don't know what got into me. Here, you want the instruments? <laughs> cute. Very cute. <laughs> Nurse Dawson, would you please get me a new set of instruments? Certainly, Doctor. Oh, I think the anesthetic is wearing off. I'm beginning to feel pain. Pain? You're beginning to feel pain? You don't know what pain is. What about my pain? All the anguish and the suffering. What do you think I feel? The pain is getting worse, Doctor. Oh, you're <laughs> It'll give you a chance to know one another better. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Now you're making a little bit of sense, but how are you going to talk the butcher here into it? Well, as a matter of fact, Lorraine, I, I was planning on a long vacation for the two of us. I, I wanted to surprise you. Oh. oh, darling, I'm sorry. Can you ever forgive me? Of course, oh, I'm of course. sorry. How would you like to go to the Bahamas, Beth? Oh, I don't know. Maybe the Caribbean would be fun. <laughs> Give me a knife, I'll do it myself. <laughs> I don't like the look of this. Let's proceed, shall we? Check his blood pressure, will you? All right, Mr. Ferguson, you're going to be all right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right, here we go. Tell me you were going away on a vacation. 
invitation. Shh. Don't tell me to shh. Just because I'm the other woman doesn't mean that I have nothing to say. Oh, boy. And don't give me your own thoughts. Butt into her affairs, you don't have to butt into mine. So! Other woman. No, there's no other woman. Shut I... up. You'd say anything to save your own skin. Go ahead. Tell her. Tell me what. Will you keep quiet? No, I will not keep quiet. You said you were going to get rid of that old broomstick. Shh. <laughs> Talking silicone, Sally. <laughs> you better get out of these hot operating room lights, honey, or you're gonna melt all over the paper. <laughs> That's it. I've had it up to here. I'm through with all this nagging and bickering. Dr. Arnold, you take over. I've had it. Wait a minute, John. I'm sorry. Well, now, don't worry, Mr. Ferguson. I've handled this operation before. Oh. Scalpel? Scalpel! Is that all you have to say to me? <laughs> Scalpel. My husband's gone. We can talk freely. Uh, you think so, huh? I stood around here quiet about your divorce for the vacation. How do you think that made me feel? You? You? I stood here while I found out that it was your wife running around with my husband. How do you think I feel? How do you think I feel? Oh, cut out. You're a goner. Uh, that's it for you. I'm getting out of here, too. Don't come out on me like that. Don't you dare work well, on me like that. Wait. Now, who's going for us tonight, and we're not paying him, and he's not going to pay him.
wonder if you'd ask Miss Herman if she'd like to join me for a drink. No, I'm afraid that's out of the question. You see, Miss Herman makes it a policy never to mingle with the... Oh, she's so lovely. <laughs> Miss Herman, I'm John Heathrow. Would, uh, would you care for some wine? I get no kick from champagne. Perhaps, uh, perhaps you'd like to join me for dinner. I love it. That's a terrific idea, and you're a swell guy. Let's see. <laughs> you know, I own every record that you ever made. I really like you. He likes me, much to my amazement. He likes me. Why don't we just, uh, look at one another and not talk anymore, ever? <laughs> Gee, I never thought it could really be like this. Gee, it's, it's funny. <laughs> funny? You're a stranger who's come here. Come on, you Tom! You're a crazy lady, Miss Ruth. <laughs> look, um, why don't we just, uh, well, is it possible for me to say anything to you that isn't a song cue? Well, I don't... Uh, your usual, Miss Herman, vodka and throat spray. <laughs> so... Over the lips and... Look out, stomach! Here she comes! Stop it! You're bananas! I spent two years in therapy trying to wrap up my problems, and, and I run into you, and you're going to drive me right back to the analyst. You need analyzing. It is not so surprising. That shut up! Shut up! <laughs> you hear me? Shut up! You belong in a funny farm. <laughs> I don't have to listen to this yelling and screaming. I came from a house where my mother and father yelled and screamed all the time. All I ever heard was, Johnny, take out the garbage! <laughs> you understand? No more yelling! Be quiet! Don't tell me to be quiet! If I want to yell, I'm going to yell. You think you have a patent on yelling? If that's what I want to do, I'm going to do it! You hear how loud I'm talking? This is a whisper! This is yelling! And I can yell louder than you! No, you can't! Yes, I can! No, you can't! Yes, I can! No, you can't! Yes, I can! Yes, I can! Be the sicker! I can! Can you bake a pie? No. Neither can I. Hey, can you can do I can Stop do it. Stop it! Stop it! Look at this. Now you got me into duets. <laughs> That's it for you, lady. You've had it. I'm leaving and I'm not coming back to this place anymore. Wherever you go! I just 
took advantage of myself. <laughs> Tonight on Horror Roundup, Dr. Jekyll and Ms. Hyde. The story of a man who not only turns to the woman he loves, but turns into the woman he loves. What have I done to myself? I've, I've turned from a, a man into a woman. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> what possibilities this conjures up. I wonder, if I married me, would I live happily ever after? <laughs> who is it? It's Dr. Kimball. Is Dr. Jekyll at home? A minute. I need the relaxation. Good. What? Wait a moment, I'll find out. Oh, uh, what will she be wearing? What? Uh, my... Wore the same thing. <laughs> are you joshing Jekyll or are you just jerky? <laughs> well, I... Better freshen up. yourself a drink while I call Rowena. Excellent suggestion. So you're Rowena, the beauty. So you're Dr. Jekyll, the goofball. Come, let me drink in the beauty of your eyes, your nose, your lips, your arg. 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 Not now. Can't you see I have a hot cook? in your throat? No, uh, it's uh, just my tonsils. I'll take them out. Excuse me. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you must be Rowena. Uh, who are you? Um, Heidi. Heidi Hyde. <laughs> Where's Dr. Jekyll? Well, something very strange is going on here. First, Dr. Jekyll acts weird and has mad convulsions. Then he has to go into the closet to take his tonsils out. Then I hear wild screams coming from behind the door. And then you appear as if from nowhere the whole thing is so bizarre and ridiculous and unbelievable. And yet somehow the whole thing seems to make sense. Excuse me. <laughs> Oh, you're Heidi. Rowena just told me all about you. Oh. You must be Dr. Kimball. Correct. Yes. May I say that you're lovely? Oh. Tell me, where has Dr. Jekyll been hiding you, Heidi Hyde? Well, you see, he's really been keeping me to himself. We, we spend a lot of time together, but I've never seen him. Did that make any sense? Why, of course, my dear. Sit down. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what is it, Heidi? Oh, I, don't, I don't know. I, I really don't know. Part of me, part of me wants to hug you, and the other part of me wants to play baseball. <laughs> Heidi, you're that rare combination of woman and freak. <laughs> I'm sorry. Something came over me, I guess. Uh, of course, my dear, it's love. Come here. <laughs> love is too no. much for you. No, no, yes, come no, here. no. no. Yes, but let yourself go. No, no, Let's no, 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 no,
experiments of mine. I am not only Dr. Kimball, I am also the beautiful Rowena. Oh, wait, I was wrong. It's a four of us caught in a rectangle. <laughs> well, I still think a marriage could work. A marriage? You and Neo? No! How could it work? I mean, what if we were to have children? Who would go into labor? Not me, Charlie. <laughs> Anybody can find problems with a marriage if they look hard enough. It's no use. I refuse to spend the rest of my life in a crowd. There is another way. Oh. Come here. I did years on a new potion that splits the chromosomes, divides the genes, rearranges the nervous system, forcing a cause and effect syndrome in the pituitary gland. Uh-huh. Yes, this the, enables the brain to divide itself into two different entities. It what? The brain divides oh, itself into different yeah. entities. Yes, uh-huh. do we have that? Uh-huh. All right. Got it. Got it. Right? <laughs> Therefore, the two of us become four separate people. Ah, oh, it'll never work. All right, here's something the Avon lady dropped off. Oh. <laughs> Oh, darling. Oh, sweetheart. Oh, lovely. Oh, no.
And remember, if we don't conquer pollution, it will conquer us. I'm so glad we had this time. Just to have a laugh or sing a song. Seems we just get started. And before you know it comes the time we have to sing so long. Thank <laughs> you. 